So one key thing, as we all called out, is this introduction of the assistance API. So I'll actually pass off to Matthew to talk about this, and I think he has maybe a quick little demo that he put together to show off. Yeah, all righty. So uh, if y'all haven't read the blog post, I highly, highly recommend it for y'all. Um, the semantic kernel team had a, a bit of a knowledge that assistance was coming. And so a lot of the work that we've been doing to prep for V1 has actually also been used to prep for when assistance have uh, arrived as of yesterday, right? Um, what we're doing now is making sure that we can provide a experimental branch or, or space for you to see the work that we're doing to integrate semantic kernel with assistance. And we believe this is really powerful because I'm sure you all saw the demos. Assist is basically out of the box to 80, 90% of the things that you need these agents to do, right? You don't have to necessarily worry about memory. Uh, if you're okay with uh, your functions being run in the cloud, you have code interpreter. There's a ton of really great value of assistance. And so the next question is like, when when would I actually use something like semantic kernel? Like when does it actually come into play? One, we want to make using assistance brain dead easy. So I'll be showing you a POC in a bit of where we're pushing our SDK to make that possible. And we want to be the glue that allows you to start with assistance, be super productive with them. But when the day comes when you want to use a different model, you want to use local plugins, um, you want to use local models, whatever it might be, what, if it's something that OpenAI doesn't provide, and there will always be some things that OpenAI doesn't provide, we want you to be able to use Semantic Kernel to connect those dots, right? So that's so one, make it easy to use assistance, two, provide gaps that OpenAI has, and then the third one is, because we're in Octo, we're in the office of the CTO, and because we're an open source project, we always want to be pushing semantic kernel forward. We want to be pushing AI, the field forward. And what's really buzzy right now is allowing agents, or in this case, assistants, to talk to each other. Because if you've seen from Autogen, from their, their research, having agents actually talk to each other uh, allows them to accomplish more, right? It's just like us. As humans, uh, one of us can achieve only so much, but when you put us in a group as a team, we can achieve so much more. And so as we push into assistance and agents, we also want to make it really, really easy for you to have these agents talk to each other. And we're going to be taking a slightly different approach than Autogen so that there's different kinds of uh, 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 ways of orchestrating these agents out in the field, and we can kind of figure out which one actually works best. Okay, So I'm going to pause there, see if there's any questions at a high level, and then I'll love to dove, dive into uh, the, the work that we have uh, to kind of preview what the SDK will look like uh, with using assistants and having them talk to each other. We have in the chats, Stefan yeah. saying he's very interested in the tools for the assistants. Yes, 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 yes. Tools are uh, very uh, important. Um, so all the work that folks have been doing with building plugins and functions um, will help accrue to providing your uh, your assistants even more capabilities than what's available out of the box. OK, so what you see on my screen right here is what we imagine is kind of like the Hello World app using semantic kernel in the future. So at the top, standard stuff, we're bringing in our keys, we're getting our models ready. All of this is, is standard for, for semantic kernel. Um, if you haven't seen the V1 proposals, you'll also see that we're uh, introducing an interface for plugins. That will be a thing. Um, what's new, I'm sharing on my screen, is actually being able to create net new assistants. And if you look at kind of the APIs for creating assistant from OpenAI, 
And what we need from a kernel perspective, there's a ton of overlap, right? You need to be able to provide a AI service. You need to be able to provide the uh, assistant with tools or plugins. Um, and then if we go to, what do we have here? The research assistant. Um, you can also provide a, a template, uh, I'm sorry, a instruction set for that particular agent. In this case, we're telling it, hey, you're a researcher that searches web for the information. And so our current proposal, which might change, we might uh, uh, create this as a, a separate class, is we're, we're being kind of bold and saying, what if an assistant was a kernel, right? And so you could start it up with all of these different things. So behind the scenes, uh, this is a uh, an i kernel, and then you'll also notice that it's also an i plugin, right? We want to be able to afford an assistant to be able to use other assistants, and because in Semantic Kernel we believe plugins are the best way of expressing extensibility, by making assistants plugins themselves, if we go down to our create our project manager assistant. You can see when we give it the tools, when we give it the plugins, we aren't giving it just functions to perform Bing queries or to perform math. We're actually giving other assistance. And so what this means is similar to kind of like Autogen, when you start having a conversation with this project manager assistant, it now knows I have a team underneath me. I have people that can help me achieve the user's request. So let's let's go ahead and see what uh, this application looks like when we run it. So I'll go ahead and hit uh, run and this thing will get started. We have our standard kind of chat loop, right? Uh, we get, wait for the user input. Uh, we read it in and we add it to the thread. So you'll notice I created a thread up here. Um, if you're not familiar, a thread is kind of this stateful uh, conversation that OpenAI hosts as part of their service that you can add messages to, and then you can uh, run and have an agent or assistant come back with an answer for you. So let's go ahead and add our first user message to the thread. Uh, we'll keep it simple, like hello. Now. When I hit enter on hello, this is something simple. This is something that the project manager should be able to answer for themselves, right? So when we hit enter and we have uh, the project manager run the thread, so uh, try to create the next reply to this thread, we can see it does just that. The project manager answers, hey, how can I assist you? What's up? What, what can I do for you? So great, we've shown how you can talk to one assistant using this new semantic kernel SDK. But what's really powerful, what we think is, is going to be the future of, of uh, assistants is being able to use them together. So let's now ask the uh, project manager something it doesn't know how to do. So you'll notice in these plugins, I just given it some other uh, uh, agents, it doesn't have the ability to say search the web, right? But it does know that one of its assistants can search the web. So if we look at this research assistant, we've given it the plugin search plugin. And if we look at how we've defined the researcher, we've told it, we've, we've said it has a description that, hey, this is an assistant that searches the web for information. This tells the project manager that I can use this other assistant to accomplish tasks. So we'll go back over here and now let's ask for something uh, that requires the research assistant. Uh, can you search for uh, good places to eat in Seattle? So we hit enter. The project manager is smart enough to know, actually, I can't answer that myself. So I'm going to be leveraging one of my plugins. I'm going to be leveraging another agent, another assistant to help me. And I've asked, hey, what are some good places to eat in Seattle? The researcher is performing a Bing query, and you can see here it synthesized that Bing query and pasted it to the console, uh, or in this case, told it to the project manager. They're having a, a, a back and forth conversation, right? And now that the project manager is happy with this information, he's like, okay, cool, great. I know of all the great places to eat. I can now present that back to the user. 
And so here it's sharing uh, uh, an answer to the original question, what are some good places to eat in Seattle, back to the user. Um, so that that is uh, our initial demo, and I'd love to just get some feedback on um, uh, what you think about the interfaces that we're introducing to create uh, different assistants uh, and how we're using assistants as plugins so that they can work together to solve a user's problem. Okay, stop sharing. Well, thank you, Matthew. Uh, some different questions in the chat. Uh, but I have an initial question is, if an assistant kernel is one type of kernel, what other type of kernels could there be? So our our current kernel, let's take a step back and talk about like what is fundamentally new about the assistance API. What we have worked with up until today have been stateless APIs from OpenAI, from your local models, what have you, right? You give us some information and it, it has no context of the past, it just returns back a, a completion for whatever that thing was, right? With the Assistance API, OpenAI is now providing a service where it does have state, right? With threads, it can actually understand the full conversation and you don't have to manage that, right? With Assistance, you can upload files and give them information, some background. That's memory, right? That's state. So again, that's something that you used to have to manage on your own, and, and now it's sitting in, in the cloud, right? And so the reason why, what's fundamentally different about what we're calling the assistance kernel and then the previous kernel is just that. The original kernel, which we still believe is valuable, is stateless, right? It uses stateless kind of uh, uh, work, and it, it just outputs uh, information at you. The assistance kernel, though, because it is attached to the OpenAI assistance APIs, is stateful. Now, the state is managed by OpenAI, uh, but that's what finally makes it different. So we're, we're creating kind of a black and white view of the world. If you need like a stateless uh, kernel, use the, the OG kernel. Uh, if you need something more stateful, that's when you'd use the assistant one. Uh, we'll see, maybe they, a, a new way of understanding uh, this information comes about and we, we would want to introduce another iKernel, um, but for right now, that's um, uh, where we're at. Very good. Uh, Jose asked in the chat, is a thread able to be kept stored somewhere and retrieved? So the, the APIs provided by OpenAI do allow you to um, pull down whatever information composes the thread. Uh, that predominantly is, or it's only, basically your messages. Uh, so they do have a call for getting all of your prior messages from a thread, uh, and messages themselves can also have file attachments, and you can get those. Uh, so it's it's not locked away, you can always get it, um, but the value is, frankly, you shouldn't have to worry about ever getting these things. You should just be able to call the service and get responses back. And that's actually one of the values that we hope to provide with uh, Semantic Kernel. Today, uh, if you kind of look at under the hood, all the, the magic that's making that demo work, uh, you do have to make API calls to send a message, uh, do polling to see if the AI has created a new message, grab that new message, give it back to the user, right? We don't want you to have to deal with these, these, these raw kind of interactions with the assistance API. We just want you to be able to have a kernel that you can easily just send requests to and get responses back. So Daniel asks about how is this approach different from Autogen? So actually, Daniel, stay tuned because I'll be talking about Autogen if we have time <laughs> towards the end, but uh, there are similar ideas expressed here, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, Bernardo asks, if the state is managed by OpenAI, it, it is impossible to use Azure OpenAI services instead, right? Uh, where? So my understanding is uh, Azure OpenAI always like will play catch up. So as OpenAI releases a new service, uh, Azure will uh, create an identical service and provide it. So if you are an Azure customer and you have uh, uh, agreements and you, you like using them, you might have to wait a bit. 
Uh, and if you want early access, you can go ahead and use the OpenAI uh, endpoints. And then Anthony asks that, assuming that state management defaults to OpenAI slash threads, can we still use our own custom memory backends? Yes, and this is, again, another value that we see of semantic kernel. Um, I don't think anyone has like solved RAG yet to the point where like, yeah, there's one solution and it rules them all. Uh, and I think that goes for OpenAI as well. And so I believe there'll be a period of time where there'll be competing different uh, implementations of memory. Uh, so Devis on the call has uh, kernel memory, there's, there's Llama index, uh, there's the vector databases themselves. And so what we believe is if you use something like semantic kernel, you can bring in those additional memory providers as plugins, right? To enrich the already strong capabilities of assistance, right? You can give assistance superpowers with plugins. 